What's going on, Clutch Squat? What up, what up, what up? It's your boy, Duck. It's your boy, Ross. This is in the Clutch. Hey, back to ladies and gentlemen of the video today, you feel me? Back with some Mr. Ballin'. It's been quite some Ballin'. time since we checked out a, a Mr. Ballin' video. But, yeah, that's uh, been a while. Um, we definitely wanted to check him out. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for it. Mm -hmm. uh, this video is titled, It Started as a Sighting and Ended in horror so we are in the month of october halloween is right around the corner mm -hmm. and mr ballin is very good at storytelling and painting these pictures these he visuals is. for you and uh he can definitely somewhat uh creep you out just with the stories that you hear that sometimes happen to be true you know so that's that's gonna be a interesting one to see what this one is talking about mm -hmm. and how true it actually is depending on you know who's telling who uh relate the information but either way, Mr. Ballin definitely gonna have you, uh, you know, <laughs> staying up. up at night, nice, yeah, especially man. if you're watching this at night, man. One so. of the best storytellers out there. And I challenge you to not only yeah. watch this when you are watching it, regardless, but also try to watch it at nighttime. Because we'll yeah, try to, yeah, yeah. we'll drop it at nighttime. So make sure you're watching it at nighttime. Because man, uh, he has the best commentary and storytelling yeah. uh, out there. So let's get into this bad boy. It started as a story made in Brazil in the 1980s. Now, at the time, the Brazilian government <laughs> attempted to hide this story, uh -oh. saying it was just too sensitive for the public to know about it. But eventually, photos Is of Brazil? this discovery were leaked, mm -hmm. and it sent Brazil into a panic. Now, I'm not going to show you any of the actual leaked photographs, because they're just too graphic. Oh, whoa. But I will be describing them in some up? detail <clears throat> towards the I'm end good, of this bro. video. So Someone say it's too graphic. I'm good, bro. But before we get into that story, <laughs> I don't go out my way if you're a fan of the dark and stuff. mysterious delivered in story you. format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do, and we upload once a week. So if that's of interest to you, please offer the like button a can of soda, but be sure you <laughs> secretly like violently did shake it before you hand it to Also, please subscribe like, to our channel like and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Dude, that's all it's Okay, so let's get into today's story. <laughs> Smack you, Mr. Ball. Man. I wish we could change the like button emoji to like a a, a peach. What? If you know, you know. <laughs> Stupid. Thanks, On the afternoon of September 29th, 1988, a 10 year old boy named Francisco was okay. walking along the perimeter of a man made lake in southern Brazil while poking the ground with his stick. Francisco okay. was doing one of his favorite after-school activities, which was looking for bugs. And this lake, which was a part of the Billings Reservoir in the Brazilian state of Sao Damn. Paulo, was his favorite place to do that. And the reservoir was gigantic, yeah. but it was not shaped like a typical circular lake. Instead, it was more like a big river that kind of wound around and had all these skinny branches kind of jutting off the sides of it. And on this particular day, Francisco was walking along one of those skinny offshoots of this lake, where at certain points, if Francisco wanted to, he could literally swim to the other side of the lake in a matter of minutes. Now, Francisco knew he was not really supposed to be anywhere near this reservoir. Because in recent years, gangs from the nearby cities would bring their murder victims oh. out to this reservoir oh, and wow. bury them here. And so locals knew it was not a safe place and to stay clear. Damn. But Francisco, he didn't listen to any of that because he loved walking around this lake and looking <clears> for <throat> bugs. And so he thought, you know what? No one's harmed me yet, so what's the big deal? Oh, and so man. as Francisco casually walked along, poking at the mud, looking for his bugs, he finally saw one. It was a huge water scorpion, almost two inches long. Jeez. And so immediately Francisco, without taking his eyes off the bug, drops his backpack, grabs a clear container that he kept in the side pocket. He opened it up, he bent down, and he scooped up this water scorpion and capped it. And then he brought the container up and looked inside to kind of admire his new pet. And mm. as he was staring at this the container, pit. he noticed something odd on the other side of the lake. He basically saw it through the plastic container. And so he lowered the container to get a better look at this strange thing on the other side of the water. And mm. what he saw was this big group of vultures all oh, kind of standing no. in a circle right on the water's edge. And immediately, like, Francisco right, was way go. more interested in these vultures than in his bug because vultures meant there had to be a dead thing nearby because vultures are scavengers. And so whatever they were circled around was probably a dead animal. Yeah. But Francisco, he looked around and realized there was no way to get to the other side of the water to see what whatever this dead thing was, unless he swam. 
and he knew if he went back home with soaking wet clothes, his mom would know he had snuck to the reservoir and he'd be in lots of trouble. And so, feeling really frustrated, Francisco just picked up a rock and chucked it to the other side, trying to splash the water near the vultures to get them to fly away so he could see the dead thing. But mm. the first rock he threw did not really have an effect. The vultures just kind of turned around and <laughs> like, looked at him like, well, and then went on, back so. to whatever. Uh, nigga, come on, Russell Wilson. If you don't get your ass up out of here before we come out to you. <laughs> right. No, we, we, can, we can change a lot of things now. If you, if you want to. <laughs> I like them yeah. niggas. Well, what you what you doing, dog? Get out of here, away. bro. <laughs> Ever was on the ground, and so Francisco gathered a big pile of like twenty-five rocks. Oh, damn! And began throwing them one after the other at these vultures, and finally Francisco had caused enough chaos on the other side of the water that the vultures got upset and they took to the air and they flew away. Oh, and damn! finally Francisco got a clear <laughs> view of the dead thing that was in the middle of the circle of vultures. Now, initially, Francisco thought this dead thing was going to be maybe a bird or some other small animal from the area, but when he got no, a good no, no. look at this dead thing from 30 feet away, it didn't look like either of those things. Uh -oh. It didn't have fur, it didn't have feathers, uh -oh. it actually looked kind of pale, almost like a pig. But Francisco's thinking to himself, mm -hmm. why would a pig be all the way out here? And then it slowly dawned on Francisco yep. that what he was looking at was actually a dead person. Suddenly terrified, Francisco scooped up his things, turned around, and ran to the nearest village all where he is. began screaming for help. Within a few hours, the area along the water where the vultures had been and where this body was, was swarming with police and also with curious villagers. Normally, when a body was discovered in or near this reservoir, which unfortunately happened quite a bit because of all the recent gang violence, police would often break ranks from the investigation and walk over to the local onlookers and kind of fill them in and tell them, you know, who this person was and what they think happened but this time it was totally different. The police mm. were totally secretive and it was really obvious. The police immediately roped off the entire area with crime scene tape so and then the police up. officers mm -hmm. stood in a circle, shoulder to shoulder, blocking the view of the villagers so they couldn't see the body. And then when villagers actually walked up to police and said, hey, can you tell us what's going on? The police would say they couldn't talk about it and then they would tell the villagers to back up and stay away. Locals mm. would stick around for a while, being treated this way the entire definitely time going by on, police. Oh, sure. And then finally, when the sun started to go down, and it was clear the police were very committed to hiding what was going on, whoever was still there finally just left, figuring when they got home, they could just turn on the news and see what had happened with nah. this dead person. But mm -hmm. when they got home and turned on their TV, there was not one news story about this body. And at a minimum, this story should have dominated local news, but it somehow was not being talked about. And then even stranger was the next morning when locals got up, they headed back to the reservoir to see what the police were up to. And when they got there, they found the police were gone, the body was gone, and there was absolutely no trace that anyone or anything had ever been there. It was like it had been totally sanitized. For wow. days, locals in this area continued mm. to check the TV news, they checked the radio, the newspapers for some story, some bit of information about this dead body that was found. But again, there was just absolutely nothing, and it just made no sense. Why wasn't anyone talking about this? And so eventually, in the absence of any official information about what happened, a rumor began to circulate among locals that the body belonged to a local fisherman who had gone missing three days before Francisco discovered him. Hmm. And this fisherman, apparently he was an alcoholic, and he had gone to the reservoir, and he had begun drinking, and apparently he drank so much that it killed him. Now, many people wondered, you know, if this drunk fisherman story was the real story, then why were the police so secretive yeah. about the body and Don't why weren't they willing to give up any information to the crowd about what had happened to this guy? I mean, a drunk <laughs> fisherman is not a super sensitive thing. Yeah, that's, it just seemed that's like that doesn't line up with the police. Easily say. Yeah. But questions like these remained unanswered and after several weeks of still no new information, no news coverage anywhere, even the most skeptical of villagers who really thought there's something weird going on here they just kind of forgot about it and moved on. Until six years later, in Damn. 1994, Damn, six years. when someone 
we don't know who, from the Brazilian government decided they just couldn't keep the secret any longer. Uh -oh. So they gathered up some photos and an autopsy report they were not supposed to have, and they smuggled those things to the media. And Damn. once the media published these things, it became immediately clear that the dead man who was found in the reservoir in 1988 was not a drunk fisherman who drank himself to death nor was he the victim of gang violence. Instead, it appeared that this person's death could potentially be paranormal. Uh-oh. Right. Uh oh! All right. it's starting to get real, man. Make sure the lights is if on. If you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story form. Oh man. Oh, would love to check that out, the audio version too. Mm -hmm. But before Ooh, we dive yeah. into the significance of those leaked photos and the leaked autopsy report, you need to understand a weird aspect of Brazil's history. Brazil has an absolutely astounding number of sightings of unidentified flying objects, or mm. UFOs for short. And these are not your typical UFO stories where some person claims they saw aliens or they were abducted mm. by aliens, but they have no witnesses, they have no proof, they have nothing but their own story. No, in Brazil, the bulk of their UFO sightings are reported by their military because Brazil actually has a government program to monitor UFO sightings because it happens so much in their country. In That's fact, wild. the Brazilian government was directly involved in one of the most famous UFO sightings of all time. It was called the Night of the UFOs. This famous sighting, or sightings, because it actually happened in four different Brazilian states simultaneously, Wow. happened on May 19th, 1986, which was two years before Francisco spotted the dead body in the reservoir. On that 1986 day, at around 8.15 p.m., an air traffic controller at an international airport in Sao Paulo noticed three red lights hovering over the airport, and so the controller called it in and asked, you know, what are these things? But nobody knew. And at the exact same time, all across Brazil, dozens and dozens of other people who have no idea what's happening at this international airport began reporting that they too were seeing strange lights in the sky. And many of these reports of these lights were coming from military personnel wow. and government officials. Mm. And so this was like a really big deal that like all across Brazil, everybody's seeing lights in the sky. And so the government, in response to this, scrambled their fighter jets and sent the jets up to try to intercept one of these sets of lights, just to see who or what they were and potentially shoot them down if they had to. But when these jets got anywhere close to these unidentified flying objects, these lights in the sky, these UFOs would move away like instantly. One UFO was observed wow. suddenly disappearing and then reappearing 20 miles away in just five seconds. Jesus. Which meant that UFO had to travel at least five times the speed of sound <laughs> to cover that distance in such a short amount of time. For reference, humans are not capable of going that fast. We yeah. cannot do that. Eventually, the night of the UFOs ended we'll when all these UFOs, <laughs> these lights in the sky, just kind of suddenly vanished. And then a couple of days later, the Brazilian government held this big press conference about the event, and they would say, we have no idea what those lights were or where they came from. We have no clue. However, whoever or whatever was controlling these UFOs showed obvious signs of intelligence. Now, as mind-blowing as that would be to, First hear time that, to hear that potentially intelligent creatures are flying around your airspace, remember, this is Brazil where UFO sightings were kind of the norm. Wow. And so people were definitely shocked by this. This was a terrifying thing, but they just kind of accepted what they were told and assumed, you know, the government will handle this <laughs> and people moved on with their lives. That is, until several years later, in 1994, when those photos and the autopsy report of the dead person in the reservoir were leaked, and then suddenly the people of Brazil, they're seeing this stuff and they're realizing, wait a minute, the night of the UFOs may not have been an isolated instance. Those UFOs mm. may never have left. Here is what the public learned from the leaked photos oh boy. and the leaked ready? autopsy report. Back oh, in 1988, shit. when little Francisco spotted the dead body from the other side of the water, he correctly identified that it was a man's body. But Francisco had been wrong when he told authorities that it didn't look like this guy had any visible injuries on him. And the guy was naked, and so Francisco felt pretty confident that he would have seen something if the guy was wounded. 
But when the police arrived and they saw the body up close, they immediately saw he had several very serious and very strange physical injuries. He had these four perfectly circular one to one and a half inch diameter holes drilled into his body. Whoa. There were two right above his chest, basically sitting above his armpit. There was one that was right over his belly button, so his belly button was gone. It was just a hole where it had been. And there was also one in his crotch. And these holes were not crudely done. These were done with surgical precision, almost hell? like whoever had done it was Had using high-end medical tools to make these cuts. <clears throat> now, at first glance, the authorities had no idea why these holes were on this guy's body. But when the autopsy was done, they discovered this man was missing the majority of his internal organs. <gasps> and after doing some investigating, they discovered that all of his organs had literally been vacuumed out of him through these holes on his body. Those holes were basically just ports to pull things out of him. Also, most of the man's blood had been suctioned out of those holes as well. But that wasn't all. The man also had one of his ears removed, one Wait. of his eyes was removed, and the lower part of his face was also removed. And again, all of these cuts looked like they had been made with absolute surgical precision. But perhaps the most brutal aspect of all the things that came to light when these documents were leaked was something that unless you looked really closely at the autopsy report, you wouldn't necessarily notice. And it had to do with this man's vagus nerve. Your vagus nerve is something that controls part of your nervous system that's responsible for automatic functions like heart rate and digestion. And so when your body is suddenly in great distress, like suddenly you're fighting for your life or something, your vagus nerve can basically shut off those automatic functions like digestion in order to ensure all your energy is going towards fighting for your life. Mm. But in this dead man's case, his autopsy revealed that his vagus nerve had gone absolutely wild right at the moment of his death. It's complicated, but this suggests that this man was very likely alive oh. when his face was being surgically cut off and those holes were being drilled into Whoa. his body and his oh, organs were no. being vacuumed out. And then at some point, the excruciating pain that came from these horrible things happening to him got so, so bad his vagus nerve basically turned off his heart. So it was not these horrible wow. physical injuries that killed him. He literally died from the pain Jesus. of these physical injuries. Damn, In short, crazy. his body basically killed itself to avoid feeling the pain it was feeling. Wow. So I'm That's sure you're wondering blowing. how does Yo. That's crazy. Bro. That's a, that's a ridiculous amount of pain if your body says, "Yeah, I'm out." Like that's GGs, a, fam. That's that you got to be going through some pain for your body to just shut itself down like it just it can't take no more. That's ridiculous. That's true. Woo! Crazy. Does the dead man in the reservoir and these leaked photos and the autopsy report, Damn. how does all of that connect with the night of the UFOs, which happened two years before the man in the reservoir was even found? Well, following the night of the UFOs in 1986, farmers in Brazil who lived in the areas where these famous sightings took place began reporting that their cattle were dying kind of inexplicably. Uh -oh. And this began mm -hmm. happening with enough frequency in all of these areas where the UFO sightings had taken place that a theory began to develop in Brazil that maybe the UFOs that were here during the night of the UFOs have something to do with all these cows turning up dead. And as that theory began to take hold all across Brazil that, you know, UFOs are killing our cattle, another theory began to come out of that one, which was, well, if the UFOs are coming in here and killing cattle, what's stopping them from killing people? Right. And then in 1988, so two years after the night of the UFOs, and right in the middle of all these farmers all across Brazil saying their cows were dying for no reason, the dead man in the reservoir was discovered. And as soon as the government saw the physical condition this guy was in, with the weird holes drilled in his body and his organs missing and his face pulled off, that plus the fact that he was located in this reservoir, mm. which by the way, was in a night of the UFO sighting area, the government decided they would have to hide the story. Mm. A critical detail that I have left out intentionally until right now is that the cattle who were turning up dead 
they were turning up dead with circular holes drilled into their bodies with organs missing and parts of their faces removed. Whoa. Meaning, clearly, whatever was happening to these cattle inside yeah. of these sighting areas had happened to this man in the reservoir. Damn. And if that got out to the public, then it would confirm for many people in Brazil that, yep, the UFOs, they're the ones going after the cattle, and now they're going after us too. And so this was why the police were so secretive about mm -hmm. the body and not letting anybody see it or learn anything about it. And it was also why no news was run anywhere in Brazil about mm -hmm. the story. It's because the government was really trying to make sure it did not get out. And the government was able to keep it quiet until 1994 when those photos and the autopsy report were leaked. But like all things having to do with UFOs or aliens or paranormal stuff, it's like despite the evidence, those things very quickly are pushed mm, into yeah. the kind of conspiracy theory bucket yep. and they stay, stay there. there. People yep. do not want to touch that category. So, even though Brazil remains an absolute hotbed for UFO sightings, Wikipedia even has a page dedicated just to tracking Jeez. Brazilian That's UFO crazy. sightings, despite all that, no one really cares. But if you care, there is an unbelievable amount of information online about what's going on in Brazil, and if nothing else, it is just a fascinating rabbit hole to fall into. Jeez, That's crazy. Bro. Woo, that uh So that's gonna do it. If you enjoyed yeah, that was a uh, man. That was tough. That bro. was that was fucking creepy as hell, man. I ain't gonna lie to you now. I had to check outside my room. I was like not, not that shit. I over there. I kinda wanna low key look up the pictures. I don't, bro. I'm good, bro. I don't need to know. He was very descriptive in how this man brutally died. I don't think I want to look that up. And you shouldn't want to look that up either. Like, just to see the... Um, nah, just to see that. how... No, I don't know. No. It's, it's, it's something about it that just makes me interested to want to see, like... <laughs> you want to see this nigga... <laughs> nah, rest in peace to him, for real. But I'm saying, like... Drilled up like some fucking holes and, and cheese? I'm you want to see that? I'm saying it because it won't fall in the parent... Like, just the, you know conspiracy thing for me you know what i'm saying because on the cool a lot of this stuff could really be happening but we don't really like you said care because it's just like oh that's just one of them conspiracies you know we just throw it to the back mm -hmm. of our head and we hop back on instagram and you know mm -hmm. feed into the yeah. bs when yeah. stuff like this is really happening i kind of want to be aware so that way we'll know we need to start preparing ourselves because <laughs> i don't want to be the next example you know what i'm saying like facts Facts. For your body to be going through so much pain that it has to shut itself down. Yeah, bro, that shit's wild, bro. That is, woo, that was wild. Ah, uh, yeah. They definitely knew something. Once they said, nah, you can't see what's going on here. Yeah, there's there's a good chance they know something. They don't want you to know. That's, I definitely that's wouldn't be living in Brazil. I definitely. Be, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good, bro. GG's to Brazil. I don't even want to visit yeah. Brazil no more. <laughs> I'm, I'm good, man. I'm I'm straight, man. <laughs> Going out there for a vacation to here. Ooh. Yeah, I'm good, bro. I'm Those not trying to lights. get. I'm not trying to get drilled up, nigga. I'm I'm cool. I'm cool, bro. I want to keep Leave fight, though. Like, I want to know, like, if he tried to fight, like, what kind of... Um, I don't know. We don't know what attacked him. Whatever attacked him, they they had him immobilized to the point where he couldn't obviously probably move. So, whatever yeah. they had, yeah, they made sure he wasn't going nowhere. And if their so. bodies can move five times the speed of sound, yeah, ain't they probably just boop, boop. Yeah, just... Yeah, man, that shit's wild. Bang! Mr. Ballin once again with the... Great on the storytelling. He knows how to paint the picture for you or whatnot. So, yeah, definitely go subscribe to him if you haven't already. Link to the original video will always be down below. So, you, you can know it. Show him some support as well. So. Yeah, yeah. Go support him, man. He definitely love mm -hmm. that he do this. Uh, and we're going to be checking out some more. So, let us know if y'all want us to see some more of these. Let run up the likes. If y'all run up the likes enough, we'll, of course, continue the series. Um, mm -hmm. Got to love his content. And uh, yeah, so continue to spray love, be love. Finna go catch me an episode of SpongeBob or something to come. <laughs> something light you on know, it. To stop me from Googling this because I'm very interested to see. But uh, I'm going to go try to do something else. But we love you guys. Catch y'all in the next video, man. Peace out. Already, man. If you got a problem, then we got the solutions. And there's no illusion. I made this shit happen. I'm living life lucid. I'm switching my strategies.
Now they hate on me cause I'm causing casualties But why are they after me? Deep inside they know they can't handle half of me